Women on Wealth is proudly sponsored by First for Women. Celebrating leading women. Powerhouse, and she certainly earned her stripes as one of South Africa's successful serial entrepreneurs. This is Woman on Wealth, and I'm Nozi Pombanjo. Tonight, we profile the owner of Johannesburg's trendy darky cafe, that's Charlotte Monagisi. We also find out how to grow your wealth pie, and we do that with Wealth Chef Anne Wilson. And in Power Redefined, we bring you the woman leading the charge to eradicate global food insecurity, Ertherin Cousin. Businesswoman Charlotte Monakisi is involved in a wide range of businesses, but it's her provocative cafe in downtown Johannesburg that keeps people talking and coming back for the authentic urban African cuisine. I sat down with her to find out why she chose this controversial name for her business. Well, to be controversial, really, you know, Darky Cafe stimulates debate. So a lot of foreigners would be like, Charlotte, why Darky? Like, are you allowed to even, you know, use the name Darky? And uh, which is great because if it's Charlotte's or Sophie's or any other name, it goes over your head. Uh, but with Darky, like I said, it stimulates debate and it sticks in people's heads. Did you get any backlash uh, from that when you first uh, put out the name? Well, not really. Um, I've got p wide partners in terms of uh, on a franchisor level ro rolling it out. And uh, they struggled a bit initially in terms of, I mean, they'd be, you know, registering and they'd be like Darky Cafe. And uh, the Darkies on the, you know, on the other side of the counter would be like, hell, hang on. You know, but I've never had any incidents, no. But you're a serial entrepreneur. This is not the first venture that you've uh, set up. Maybe let's talk a little bit about that. Um, your experience in terms of the biggest uh, setbacks and the biggest successes you've had in the last couple of years. Yeah, look, the main experience, and I'd say also the main lesson, uh, is the fact that, you know, in business, it's not always success. Uh, there's a lot of downs as well. So you take the lessons with you and you build on the, you know, on, on, the, on those negatives, you, you turn them into positives. Um, I got my fingers burnt with the first business, closed it down after a year, bad partnership, uh, and also the dynamics in Soweto, you know, a lot of dynamics really and a lot of factors uh, to look into uh, but I look back now I'm like you know the Charlotte that I am now could not have been had it not been the experiences then you know so I'm not too hard on myself now so whether business takes a dip in winter and it picks up again in summer yeah. I'm like you know I look at the you know the lighter side of things really oftentimes we hear women say that they have such difficulty when it comes to unlocking financing and funding because they still have to deal with men in black suits when it comes to that what's your experience been yeah, look, um, I must be honest, I've never really had a harsh or a very negative experience when it comes to that. Because uh, I'm very pushy, I'm very bullish when it comes to business. So yeah. if someone tells me no, I find another angle to actually get them to say yes. And if they say no, I'd be like, okay, you say no, but for what reasons? Tell me what the negatives are so I can work on those negatives and go knock at, knock at a different door. Uh, so I've never had an experience that was really like a complete door shutter. Well, bullish in the business space, let's talk about Charlotte at home. Um, how do you stay ahead and how do you balance uh, the pressures of being an entrepreneur and all the other roles that women have to take on uh, at the same time? Yeah, uh, very good question. Look, um, I still struggle. I'm not saying I'm bullish in the home, uh, but I tend to take on a lot on my shoulders with my family as well. Uh, I have a lot of people relying on me and so on. So the only negative is I move from business and I move into the home environment yeah. and I still have, you know, I'm still carrying a lot of, a lot of baggage. But a uh, huge difference really, I mean, uh, in the family environment, uh, you know, I, I, I'm more relaxed, I'm not as bullish, you know, I, you know, that type of thing. But in terms of responsibilities, I still find that I take on a lot of responsibilities. Are you taking on uh, the financial decisions as well when it comes to your family context in the same way that it's your signature that one would find uh, in the business space? Yeah, absolutely. Um, my dad, my biggest mentor actually, um, has very minimal education. So in his businesses, I'm also his uh, administrative partner. 
So when it comes to the financial decisions, I'm still in charge. So even on the family side of things, uh, yeah. which is also the business side of things, but uh, you know, I tend to, to, to have, uh, I'm forced to be involved in, in, in that angle as well. Thank you for making the time to join us. Wilson's book, The Wealth Chef, is a step-by-step -step guide of how to make your money work hard so you don't have to. I joined her in her wealth kitchen to find out how women can cook up their own wealth success. So and I'm assuming that I've now brought home the bacon, which I have right here, and I want to now make my wealth pie. So where do I start? The key thing is to remember this is key ingredient called money, your bacon, yeah. is meant to serve you now and in the future. So you're going to start carving that up and okay. we're going to carve it up into six different pots. Really, really important. So you're going to slice every bit of bacon that comes in, money in. And the very first pot you're going to put into okay. is the money that you're going to allow to stay in your life and work for you. How radical does that sound? You can get it working for you. So this how is your pay of, yourself much, first. How much of my total percent of okay. everything you could bring in is going to go into your pay yourself first. And we're going to get back to that when we're going to expand your dough. So for now, put that aside, 10%. My second pot? is your save to spend. So it's putting money aside with the intention of spending it later. Kids' education, that holiday, that, so 10% goes mm -hmm. into save to spend. My third part? The next key part is so important. This is about your personal growth, expanding yeah. you. You know, if you're not growing, you're dying. So you need to cons consciously invest in yourself. How to become a better wealth chef, how to get the things you want in your life, 10% goes in there. Okay, so... Pot number four. So pot number four is actually such an important pot. This is your play pot. Mm, I like this one. You've got to make money and life fun right now. So this is the stuff that really juices you. And you consciously put some money aside for this, especially as women. What fills you up juices you. And it's, there's a lot of rules around that, but we can so get to that another spa, time. treatments. Going dancing. Going, having that stuff that fills yeah. you up so you can be better with everything else in life. Pot now, five. pot number five, this is the really sensible pot. So this is your necessities. 55% of what you bring in. I'm running out of bacon here. 55%? You haven't run out yet. 55%. Okay. So the biggest slice is going to go, but that's your day-to-day -day living. Now, a lot of people go, and... You want me to live on half of my absolutely. income? Absolutely. And this is your targets. Yeah. You're going to get there because you're going to realize that every single person who's become financially free yeah. does it by directing their money with great consciousness and leadership. And you absolutely can get to the point where you're living on 55%. So that's your target. In it goes. The last bit of five percent. Five percent. Is that is for contribution and giving. Because okay. you realize that there's always enough and there's always more. It's something outside of yourself. And we'll come to this in the third debt because if you've still got consumer debt in your life, you've actually got to put on your own oxygen mask first. And some of that contribution is about claiming your freedom back. So my dough's divided into my six wealth pots. I'm sorted. You sorted. For the first recipe. Yeah. And now you're managing your money and giving it great leadership. So why don't we go to go, what do you do with it? So we're trying to grow our dough. So okay. we're going to go and let's put those pots aside yeah. and take this key pot called the amount that you've paid yourself. This money that you've said, I'm going to make okay. myself the most important bill I pay every month and get that money working for me. So you add to this, this key ingredient called compounding. This is like the yeast. So that money that you okay. put in is that yeast that triggers these other things. And you need with it time and rate of return. Now what you're going to start with is converting this money into assets. Okay. Now, assets are things that can bring money into your life as opposed to liabilities that cause money to flow out of your life. So time and rate of return. Yep, absolutely. And this is what's so key because people, we don't understand that money wants to work for us. But it's got to be given the right environment to be able to do that as opposed to working yeah. against us, which is what is happening for a lot of people with consumer debt. So debt is our third recipe. And blitzing that debt is so important Let me about the, creating the, freedom. So I can really blitz Absolutely. everything out of the debt that I have. So why this is so important yeah. is because as long as you've got consumer debt, so this is where you've spent money you don't have on mm -hmm. stuff that actually can't bring you money, can't bring you wealth. So the first key thing is you've got to get it all out of the closet. Line up all of the amounts of debt you've so got. these are the clothing accounts. There's the car loan. 
There's the credit card. Okay. You know, maybe there's that IOU to your uncle, you know, that you've got to have. So this is the key thing. Get it all out of the pantry. Yeah. You've got to know where you are with your debt. And just go, it is what it is. That's what I'm working with. No judgment, no guilt. But you make the decision that, hey, debt, consumer debt, you're out of my life because I'm reclaiming my freedom. I'm reclaiming my wealth. Now you're doing, you expand your dough at the same time, and this mm. is important. So now you're gonna have that. You structure, and you get them all in order, and you know exactly what's going. And you're gonna order them from the debt that's gonna take, you're gonna pay off the quickest. Mm. Not okay. necessarily the debt with the highest interest rate. So clothing accounts. Done. And you're going to structure that. You're gonna keep paying the minimum repayment on all of your debts, but you're going to b get your debt blitzing fuel. So now you're gonna go back to that pot. And now, take, take your breath in, because that 55%... You're going to take from the 55%? We're going to take 5% additional. Okay. Because here's the thing. To get out of debt for a period of time, we're prepared to do something radical, prepared to do it differently, because we know that if each bit of debt reduces, more money comes back to us, because there's less going out. Okay. So you're going to go cool for a period of time. You're also going to take that contribution pot. Because mm, here's the thing. You've got to put on your own oxygen mask. You can't help others if you're not fully supported yourself. So this is about going, I'm going to focus on this first, fill up my own tank. So you're going to take that 5% from your contribution and 5% from your necessities. You're going to find it. You're going to go through, find those rats in the pantry and you commit. And this is your debt destruction fuel. So you're adding an extra amount of money. Yeah. But the key thing is you focus on your first priority debt. That is the debt that you're going to pay off the quickest in three to seven years, including your personal home loan, yeah. can be written off. So very quickly, as we wrap up, um, the first thing we want to do, we want to divide up our dough. We yeah. want to then, we want to grow the dough, and then we want to obliterate the debt. Absolutely. And you do that. And when we just create these wealth habits, we get more conscious about giving our money great leadership, really knowing that this is such an important ingredient to creating a juicy feast of our lives, and we put these things on automatic, mm. we get on with living the life we really want. Every week we bring you a woman who is flexing her power muscles on the global stage. Let's take a look at the executive director of the UN World Food Program, Etherin Cousin. She's the executive director of the United Nations World Food Program and according to her organization, she's fed 177 million people since taking the reins at the world's largest hunger fighting organization in 2012. Prior to joining the World Food Program, Cousins served under President Barack Obama as the United States Ambassador to the United Nations Agencies for Food and Agriculture. In 2014, Cousin was ranked 45th on the Forbes list of the world's 100 most powerful women, and she was also named on the Time 100 most influential people in the world list. That's all we have time for for this week's episode of Women on Wealth. But do keep the conversation alive. That's by following me at Nozi Pombandu and, of course, using our hashtag WOW410. I want to know who is redefining the concept of power in your world. Until next time, stay empowered.